if you are one of the people that have purchased my CloudForge, well, I've got good news for you. Update 1.3 is out and it has a cloud spawner, a blueprint which allows you to generate clouds and make them traverse the sky or, you know, be used on the ground level or whatever you want. These clouds have a lifetime, they have a density uh, amount, and they also, you know, pretty much die off on their own to save performance. And they're, al they're allowing you to generate clouds seamlessly through the scene and be able to just effectively populate your entire uh, scene with uh, multiple different VDB clouds, very high quality, reactive to light. You've got all the controls in there. And this video shows you how to use those settings so that you can get your, you know, beautiful scenes rendered in Unreal Engine. So uh, let's begin using the new uh, blueprint. Okay, now let's have a look. I have my uh, project open in here and I'm just going to go into my uh, example map folder. And I do have an example map here where it's called Cloud Spawner. Now, this is something that's new within the um, project. So what we've got here, it says hit play to spawn clouds. And this is the box that will spawn the clouds, the, cl the cloud spawner. So this is a blueprint. Now, the um, by default, you will not be able to see anything within the scene unless you actually hit play. So this is only a runtime uh, type of blueprint that will only function then, because if not, the performance impact will be quite uh, massive. So once we click play, you'll notice you'll be able to float around in the world and then clouds will start to appear in the scene. And this takes a bit of time in the sense of, you know, after a couple of seconds, depending on the settings that you've set up, um, this will take a few seconds before it starts building up. But now, as you can see in here, we're, as we are in between the uh, cloud layer, you'll notice that there's different clouds that are spawning at different sort of points in the scene. So some of them higher, some of them lower, it really depends. But if you go down to the sort of like the bottom of the world, this is what they will look like. And you can see that it's, um, it's like a couple of different clouds that are being spawned and they're spawning at different densities and different sort of angles. And as they sort of progress through the scene, after a while, based on the settings that we've uh, set up, they will disappear. So this particular cloud spawn here that I've got, this is meant specifically to be seen sort of like within the clouds themselves because that's kind of what I've done for this particular scene but we could do something else if we would like to like you know rolling clouds for a just a normal scene or anything like that um, so let me just have a look in here just to the options that we've got so we're obviously got the option to say well we want to be able to see them from very far away so that's what the infinite trace does and then the indirect lighting is what allows them to be seen well with indirect lighting because if we actually uh, disable that um, option um so you know without it effectively at the runtime you won't be able to to do that unfortunately but effectively if we would have this off actually i think i can um i can press pause here just disable it and now press play and the clouds will no longer spawn with an indirect um lighting unless i have like a, unless you have you know you sort of encode it in the level blueprint but you can see it already the clouds are a lot more yellowish in color as they're being generated as opposed to what they were before. So that's what that does if you disable it. And with the infinite trace off, you won't be able to see them far off in the distance. Now we can say how many clouds we want to be uh, spawned. So this means that after the number of 100 clouds have been, have been reached, no more clouds will spawn. Uh, the scale that we want them to spawn at and what speed they want you want them to move into. So if you say, for example, well, I want them to go in that direction instead of the... Uh, instead of this direction and if you press play now they'll move very fast at a thousand uh, in that direction as you can see and the box that they're spawning into doesn't necessarily mean that that's where they will also end the spawn is just the point where the uh, clouds are being created but they can move on this axis for as long as their life permits so their lifespan will say when they start despawning and effectively their density will move on to zero. If you put a density of one there, we'll be able to see them a lot more denser in the scene. Um, so their density cap from zero to one now is from zero to one before it was from 0 0.02. So the clouds are going to be a lot more dense as they are being spawned, as you can see and they're going to go into a direction. Now, obviously, the bigger this box is, the more amount you want to have as well. You do have a spawn rate, so if you want all of them to spawn very quickly, 
you could put this at 0.2 and now the clouds will spawn a lot faster in the scene so those 100 clouds that we've got are going to be generated at a half uh, you know far uh, faster rate than what it was and the lifespan means that you know obviously how long they survive for in seconds before they get killed off uh, this is where we can load up the the clouds so you can load quite a few different clouds i've got i've only got them loaded until the d now the way you uh, load them is through a material so you've got to have material instances with a uh, cloud vdb texture attached to it so that's setup it already exists so if you want to you know start creating a new system in here with clouds all you really have to do is just go into your blueprints uh, select the um, uh, bp sorry not in here you're going to go into your uh, cloud for spawner and you've got this bp spawner you don't have to play with any of these things in here just get the spawner drop it in the scene wherever you want it and then once it's dropped in you want to have a look at the scale of it so let's say we're gonna make it um i don't know uh, 50 in scale so that's a like a box right and then we just want to say well we want to turn on indirect lighting and in the end infinite trace we also want to spawn i don't know about 50 clouds and we want them to move at a speed of 2000 in that direction i'm just going to remove this one because obviously i just want to have one for now um so they're going to move in that direction at a speed of 2000 uh we want them to have a multiplier free uh spawn rate every 0.5 seconds and a lifespan of 10 seconds for example now we need some materials so if i go in here into my uh, vdb materials i have this single material so i could drop any of these so let's say um, number one here has got Cyrus 14 loaded up. So I could select that one and just drop it here. And now we just have one cloud that's going to be spawned. If I press play, you can see the clouds are being spawned at different levels, different heights, because that box is quite tall. So you can see now they're all going in that direction. But um, sorry, it seems I have an error in here. Not sure what that's about, but I'll have a look, but it shouldn't be yeah that's weird just a quick tip there it seems that the um, errors for the cloud when we were pressing play and pause and stopping was because i need to have at least three clouds in here for it to actually spawn if you don't have enough clouds it won't even spawn a lot of clouds as well because it just won't be able to load up all of them so just have a minimum of three clouds in there you could even have the same material three times that's fine we we'll just do that for it anyway so We've got in there but if i go in here and if i decrease the scale to let's say i want this to be a scale of 10 so or actually more like a five so this is a very it's not a very um tall uh box now if i press play all of them will sort of spawn at the same level which is minor differences in height and this is going to be quite useful uh we i think we need to spawn them a lot faster so let's just go and do that um i'm just gonna have a look in here and put them at you know we want a hundred but we want the spawn rate to be 0.01 so they'll spawn very fast um actually because of the spawn rate being so high a lot of them are overlapping a lot of these clouds are overlapping so we're probably going to have to put that to a 0.1 maybe something like that yeah so that's going to be a lot better and you can see now there's loads of them spawning the same cloud spawning multiple times and we can see it on the sky so this is really useful as i said when you're trying to make this into like a cinematic of some kind now all the clouds have literally spawned in that uh, small amount you do want to make this box bigger in order to get more clouds on the scene um, if you tweak this long enough you'll be able to get like a lot of rolling clouds in the scene uh, but that's kind of how you set it up um i'm gonna have a look at that little error there i'm not sure why that's happening it's not usually happening but yeah don't worry about that that will not be in the project for sure uh but that's uh, that's kind of it that's how that's how you use the uh cloud spawner